Well, welcome. Um, I got to get my slide up, so let me get a slide up first. Whoops, backwards. Okay. Um, welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Missouri Students, which is sponsored by the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling and also um, StriveScan. So thanks for being here. Um, a few little housekeeping announcements before we get started. Uh, there is a little Q&A button on your screen for you to type your questions to our presenters. Um, your cameras and your microphones are off, so the panelists here that you're seeing, I can't see or hear you. Just one of a lot of different sessions that are happening, so, you know, at the end, I'll remind you again to go back and check the full schedule at the moacac.org website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available in about a week at that same website, M-O-A-C-A-C. Org. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. Maybe. I'll stop the share. I can do that. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope all is well as you all tune in. I just wanted to thank you all for joining us today, tonight, as uh, we talk about Southeast Missouri State University. To start things off, my colleagues and myself will introduce ourselves and we'll get the ball rolling. Um, my name is Byron Brownlee. I'm the mission counselor covering the territories of St. Louis City, Northern Missouri, and East St. Louis as well. Hi everybody, my name is Ariel Dumars. Um, I am an admission counselor as well and I cover Cape County, Southeast Missouri and Arkansas. Hi guys, my name is Emily and I'm an admissions counselor and I cover Central Missouri, St. Charles and other areas of St. Louis. Good evening, everybody. My name is Thomas Romine, another one of the admission counselors here at CMO. Uh, within the state of Missouri, I work with what we call East Central Missouri. So it's kind of outside of St. Louis County, down to Cape County on that eastern side. I uh, look forward to working with you guys and telling you a little bit about CMO tonight. Hello everyone, my name is Dulce Maranado Munoz. I'm a multicultural recruitment counselor here for CIMO, and I take care of Kansas City area students and of course Southwest Missouri and anything in between as far as Hispanic Latino communities. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm gonna to turn it over to Emily. She's gonna to talk to you all about the college culture here at Southeast. All right, and like Dulce said, um, I'm excited you guys are joining us. I think something that's really unique about our staff here tonight is that we are all Southeast alumni. So I think we're all excited to share a little bit why we call Southeast Missouri home and why you can too. Um, so a little bit about CMO, that's our acronym for Southeast Missouri State University. We are a public university in Missouri. So we have about 10,000 students that attend school here and we have 145 different majors. And out of those 145 majors, we have national accreditations in 25 of them. So a lot of our students from Missouri and Illinois, you know, they can start out here, and then they can end up working all over the United States and all over the world with those accreditations. And our average class size is about 30 to 35 students. So I always say it's that good size university where your professors can know you by name, but then it's large enough where you're always seeing new people around campus too. All right, and we are a division one school. So here at SEMO, we compete in the Ohio Valley Conference Championships. And last year, we were really proud of our athletics department because out of our 13 sports, we won the championships in five of them. Um, so they were really on a good roll for the fall and the winter, and we love cheering on our athletics. At SEMO, there's a lot of ways to get involved in athletics. One of our clubs is our Rowdy Crowd, and that's one of our student spirit groups. And there's a lot of also promotional um, nights that happen for these athletic events. So sometimes you can go and get free Jimmy John's or free bobbleheads or free t-shirts. There's a lot of ways to cheer on our athletics. All 
And at SEMO, we want to really um, make sure you can find people that can help you soar. So we have this saying called find your flock. We want you to find people that will help you be successful in college and out of college as well. We have 200 different clubs and organizations. Some of my favorites um, are like Harry Potter Club, Running Club. There's a lot of academic clubs on campus. Um, so we've got like, you know, Nursing Club. We have Wildlife Conservation. A lot of different organizations for you to help people or for you to find people um, to help you be successful. We also have a lot of different club sports at SEMO. So we have about 20 club sports. Some of those are basketball, baseball, archery, scuba diving, rock climbing club. Um, we also have eSports. And last year, eSports was our fastest growing club on campus and they have over 300 members. And, and in this photo, actually, there's a photo of our eSports arena and we have a space dedicated on campus to those members of this club. We also have a lot of different study abroad um, programs at SEMO that range from two weeks to a year. So it really just depends um, where you wanna study abroad and how long you wanna study abroad too. And we have faculty that can help set that up for you, whether it's a faculty led trip or if it's like an individual trip. And we have about 23 Greek life organizations 17% of our student um, population is involved in Greek life as well. All right. And then this is a slide dedicated to housing. So on campus, there's a lot of places to live and eat, which are both pretty important um, in college to be successful. You need those things. And we have 18 different resident halls. We have community style halls. And that's when you share the facilities with everybody on the floor. We also offer community private, which means you get your private room on a community style floor. And then our third style is a suite style. And that's when you have a suite mate, or you have two suite mates and then a roommate, and you share the facilities with them. But at SEMO, um, it's really nice that freshmen have the opportunity they can live in any dorm that they would like. There's none that are off limits um, for freshmen. And we also have learning communities, and a lot of our learning communities are academic based. So we have like a future health professionals, education, cybersecurity, business. So that means that you get to live with people that you have classes with. And then we also have some non-academic um, learning communities like our pet learning community. We have um, our military and our gender inclusive. So this is a really cool way to cultivate that community. And we kind of um, want to believe in, you know, finding your flock. So this is a way you can do it by living on campus. All right. And then the next slide will be about dining on campus. So at SEMO, we have a lot of different meal plans, um, depending on how much you like to eat. We have a lot of awesome places to eat on campus too and use this meal plan. We have Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, Panda Express, Subway was one of my favorites as a student. And our smallest meal plan is five meals per week. And then our largest meal is 19 meals per week. And um, you know we have that customizable meal plan, which just means that you can change your meal plan for free in the first eight weeks of this semester. Um, sometimes students think they can eat more and then they realize, oh, I only need like a 10 meal plan. So we're flexible to work with your schedule and what you need. All righty. Next slide. All right, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague Thomas. All right, hello again, everybody. Uh, yeah, it's wonderful to see all the different involvement opportunities in SEMO. Uh, you know, that was definitely one of the big things that drew me in. Uh, you know, I always thought it was the best of both worlds. Emily was talking about all those different great ways to get involved. Uh, but then knowing that when you go into class, we have a faculty to student ratio of one to 21 with these nationally accredited degrees. Uh, it's definitely this little hidden gem in Southeast Missouri that really fits the best of both. You're not getting lost in the lecture halls, but there's plenty to do on campus. So what I want to do is take a moment and I'm going to go over a lot of the different programs we're known for. And I do want to remind you too, while I'm talking, while my colleagues are talking, uh, please feel free to drop some questions. You have a little Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we have a dedicated chat monitor to help you out. All right, so first thing I want to do is kind of explain what the word college means within the university. So you see on the screen, Harrison College of Business and Computing. Um, I know as a high school student, hearing the word college uh, when talking about a university was kind of confusing. Think of this as the word department. So you can almost replace it uh, just to help explain it better as Harrison Department of Business and Computing, right? So that's all that, that means when you're hearing college uh, of a certain, certain group. It essentially is where we're putting a lot of like, uh, like majors together. Uh, so you'll see within this college, you're going to have uh, all of our business and computing majors. 
A uh, few bragging points we are very proud of is that we are top 5% business program in the world. This means that it's not just a national accreditation, which in itself is very, uh, very huge to be able to have a major that's nationally accredited, but here it's actually internationally accredited. So that's what's ranking us at top 5% in the world in business. Uh, huge deal there. Uh, the second thing to kind of brag about with our Harrison College is one of seven ABET accredited cybersecurity programs in the nation. Uh, I know you probably have heard cybersecurity being a hot topic of conversation, but you don't want to just go anywhere. You want to make sure, again, it's accredited. We're one of seven in the country that has this national accreditation. That's huge. Uh, also, I encourage you to compare because I bet we're probably the most affordable out of the seven, too. Uh, we'll get there in just a second. Uh, the last part here is that we're eight times cyber defense champions. So I hope you see a theme as I start to go through and talk about these colleges. Uh, this being uh, the first step towards that theme of it's not just in the classroom that you're learning. You are actually going out into the real world and getting hands-on experience. This is gonna be one of many examples. Our cyber defense championship title there, that means that we have cyber defense students that are actually a part of an extracurricular where they go and compete against other cyber defense teams across the state of Missouri, and we are eight time undefeated in a row. Uh, so we've beaten every other university in the state of Missouri. Uh, we also go to nationals every year and place very highly there. So I hope you kind of start to see this theme as we talk about them. Uh, so in the next college, I'm gonna talk about a few other majors that we're known for. Uh, within this college, it's gonna be the Holland College of Arts and Media. So this is for all my fine arts friends. Uh, we are very well known for the fine arts. Uh, that means that your art, your dance, your music, mass media, uh, you'll see that we are Missouri's largest conservatory of theater and dance. However, we are the only university in Missouri that has a campus dedicated to fine arts. So we actually have the River Campus. You know, I hope when you come to see campus, if you're interested in the Holland College, you do go over and visit there as well. It's about a mile away from our main campus. Uh, and it is a very tight-knit community. Uh, within that community at the River Campus, we are the only university in Missouri accredited in all four areas of the arts. So it's not just one or two, like you'll see at some schools, it's all four areas. Uh, again, just a, a really huge bragging, uh, bragging right on that, knowing your degree is recognized in all 50 states, not just in the region around that school that you might be looking at as well. Lastly, we're one of two accredited mass media programs in the state. Uh, so again, really uh, putting it out there is out on a national level and, and being recognized as such. All right, so on the next slide, I'm going to dive into the third out of the, out of the five colleges I'll talk about tonight. Uh, it is the College of Education, Health, and Human Studies. Uh, so within this, a couple really big majors we're known for are education and nursing. Uh, reason behind that, uh, first off, you see we have an Apple Distinguished Education Program. So we have been recognized by Apple, uh, the company on a national level, but it's not just that. Uh, it's also that our professors are even being asked to discuss education on a national level. Our previous dean, Dr. Rogers Atkinson, was invited to the White House a few years back to discuss policies and procedures uh, that contain or concern education uh, throughout the entire country. Uh, so it's amazing that we're being recognized at such a level that they want our professors to come and, and speak on education. Uh, in addition to that, there is the Edvolution Center on campus designed just for our education students. Uh, whether it's anything that you've probably heard of with like laser engraving or 3D printing or some of the really cool things that set them apart like augmented reality, uh, different opportunities of technology to bring into the classroom when you're out in your field experiences, a lot of amazing opportunities there. And then the next thing within this College of Education, Health and Human Studies, is a nursing program as well. Uh, we have a 100% nursing licensure pass rate. What this means is not only is the program nationally accredited, but every single student, senior year, when they're in that nursing program, they pass that test first time around. So that means that not only is it recognized in all 50 states, but it's a proven track record that those students are prepared to go into the workforce, they have the knowledge they need, and they go and ace that test every single time. Uh, also within the nursing program, we have 100% job placement rate. So that means that every single one of our students was hired, most of them before they even graduated from SEMO, they had that job lined up. Pretty amazing. All right, so the fourth college I'm gonna talk about tonight is the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. 
So, you know, you hear me harping a lot on accreditation tonight. You hear me keep saying over and over, recognizing all 50 states. Another thing that makes CMO stand out, though, is the fact that we have very unique programs. You know, you might see more unique options like marine biology or wildlife conservation, or even on this slide, you'll see historic preservation is only one of nine in the nation. So if you are looking for these more unique or niche programs, we do have those too. Uh, it's kind of the nature of the beast. We have over 140 uh, majors for you to choose from. The other uh, big thing that stands out with that historic preservation program is that we're the only university in the nation to participate in a week-long CSIS program. So this kind of ties back into earlier when I was talking about cybersecurity and I was saying there's a theme that you go out into the real world while you're still a college student here. What this CSIS program is, is that it's actually a part of a class that every historic preservation major takes, that they travel to Washington, D.C. for a week in that semester. Uh, so fall or spring when the class is taking place. But they travel to Washington, D.C. to discuss different matters, policies, procedures that are affecting them on the national level and how to handle them, how to move forward. Uh, just, again, getting that real world experience outside of a classroom desk. So actually going out and networking as well. All right, so the last college I'm gonna talk about tonight with you all is the College of STEM, or that College of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. So we do have a new and exciting program uh, that we're gonna be offering fall 21 and beyond. So that's this upcoming fall. Uh, professional pilot program is flying into Cape. So an amazing opportunity. It's another one of those unique majors that you can find at SEMO. Uh, it's a great partnership with our local airport, and it's where you can actually earn your bachelor's of science to be a professional pilot. Uh, so again, just another, another amazing opportunity. Lastly, you'll see it's not just our programs that are nationally accredited. We also have nationally recognized faculty research and accreditations. Uh, you can see the acronyms there. I don't wanna, don't wanna bore you by reading the acronym letters out to you, but essentially it means that those faculty have also been recognized in this program in addition to our other programs on a national level. So it's not just you go into class and learning from a TA at SEMO. Uh, you'll actually see that over 90% of our professors at SEMO have their PhDs. Uh, they have practiced in their field and they're currently practicing in their field ready to teach you. So we're very prideful that we are a teaching university and they're there to help make those one-on-one -on -one connections with you. All right, so that is going to be everything on my part tonight. I hope that was some great info for you. If you have any other questions, please drop them in the Q&A and I'm going to turn it over to my great colleague Dulce. She's going to talk about a lot more with you tonight. Thank you, Tomas. So with those many opportunities you heard about our academics, you might be wondering where that will take you postgraduate in Southeast. And we are very invested in your success here at CMO. We want you to launch that extraordinary career. So are we really proudful about our success outcomes with our alumni? As you can see, 97% of alumni find a job within their industry or continue their education one year after graduation. So that's huge for us. And as you can see here, these are the various companies, just a sampling of where alumni have gone all over the country or even around the world. We have nearly 80,000 alumni with connections to, to help you launch your career. And we do have an office dedicated towards that career building, career services. So they work one-on-one -on -one with you starting even as your freshman year in building that interview, interview skills, that resume that you're gonna to need to launch your career. So make sure you reach out to them. If we go to the next slide, of course, talking more about how you're gonna finance your education here at Southeast. Uh, we believe that high quality doesn't have to come with high, high cost. And we are a true testament to that. As you can see, we've expanded our test optional availability. And for those not quite familiar with the terms test optional, but what we mean by that is that we are considering you for admissions and scholarships based on your cumulative high school GPA alone. So that's huge for us. Even our prestigious scholarship, as you can see, the President's Scholarship, it is valued at $10,000. We're inviting you to apply for this scholarship if you have a 3.9 cumulative GPA, or if you have a minimum 3.75 cumulative GPA with a 31 on the ACT or a 1390 on the ACT, you can start qualifying for the scholarship to apply. And uh, that's, this is the only scholarship that really has a separate application other than admission. And both of those applications are available to you now to apply on our admissions webpage. So make sure you submit that by December 1st. 
And I will say, based on those applications, we are going to select finalists to come and interview in the spring semester. And as you can see, even becoming a finalist, you can qualify up to $1,500 in scholarship money going towards your dorm. So that's huge for us. Uh, the remaining scholarships you see here on this slide uh, are all stackable. And again, you can see what the minimum requirements are with that test option availability. And we really believe that uh, those scholarships really go a long ways when they're stacked to fund your education at Southeast. Even our proudly endowed sponsor scholarships that were created by our community and alumni, you're automatically considered for those scholarships just with your admissions application. So we will look at your application based on your major, your area of study, your demographics, and of course, any involvement you've had in high school and at the college level. So make sure you get that application submitted by December 1st. But if we go into the next slide, you'll see that we have what makes us set a part of all the scholarship programs is that we have progressive scholarship values what you see here is our main scholarship merit program that's known to us as the copper dome and it is based on that cumulative high school gpa and test scores uh, but something that's really unique to us of course is that we're super scoring your test scores we do accept act or sat we're taking the highest sub scores within those tests accordingly and then compiling them to a new average and that's going to be your super score. But you can see starting with the 3.25 cumulative high school GPA, you automatically are considered for $1,000 regardless of your scores. And then when you reach that 3.5 to a 3.89 cumulative GPA threshold, you can qualify up to $2,000 regardless of scores. And then even with the 3.9 or higher, you can qualify for $3,000 regardless of the scores. But as you can see, the both your GPA and those super scores are, are higher and they keep increasing the more money you're gonna qualify for that. Uh, but again, I say that what sets us apart in our scholarship grow program is that we're gonna invest in your successes. So you'll see there in that smaller chart, we've added the year as you renew your scholarship on that, how that's gonna grow with you here at Southeast. And if you as an incoming freshman qualify for the $1,000, $2,000, level copper dome on year one that's your freshman year and you renew that for the uh, next years it grows by a hundred dollars every year the three thousand level four thousand level copper dome grows by two hundred dollars every year and then our highest bracket value here on the copper dome at five thousand grows by two hundred fifty dollars every year so we really believe in the investment of your successes here at southeast and we believe we're going to reward you for those so you can see how that stacks up in the savings in the total four years but even our residence life leadership awards you see there also has a progressive value if by the time you're still living on campus your junior year here on campus uh, it doubles in value up to two thousand dollars and to qualify for this scholarship all you need is a 3.0 cumulative high school gpa with an 18 on the act and be part of any leadership club whether it's beta club student council or if you're completing the a plus program will get you that scholarship awarded going towards your dorm fees and then you can also see right below that is a president scholarship again that's a prestigious one that has a separate application uh, that grows by five hundred dollars every year as you renew it so definitely worth the investment in your future what we have here at southeast and if we go to the next slide you'll see that we've created a scholarship just dedicated for missouri residents known to us as the will to do award so you're a Missouri resident and you have a 2.75 GPA, you're admitted to Southeast and you file your FAFSA, that's the free federal application for financial student aid by March 1 and you can uh, get pay eligibility, grant eligibility on that process FAFSA, you can qualify for your tuition and fees to be covered. So that's huge. That's a third of the cost that I'll break down here in a little bit. But as you can see, just having your FAFSA submitted by uh, March 1st, being eligible, being a Missouri resident, having that 2.75 GPA can get you zero tuition and general fees. If we go to the next slide, uh, of course, talking about that breakdown of costs that I mentioned to you guys, we like to be transparent to see, to show you where your money's gonna go here at Southeast. We are known to be the most, one of the most affordable universities nationwide. And as you can see here, the cost that we share with you is based on this current academic year, 2020, 2021. And it's based on 30 credit hours for the whole academic year. And as you can see there for Missouri residents, the tuition right now is set over $6,000 for the whole year. So that's paying for your classes. Right below there, you see our general fees. Those are set over $1,000. 
I like to call these fees, these are what make college, college. So here at Southeast, uh, if you ever visit our campus or if you do visit our campus, you'll notice that we have very much of a campus community feel to it. So we do have a shuttle system that has multiple stops around campus. So you don't have to walk everywhere within that. And then this fees also allows us to give you a tutoring lab, a writing lab, a math lab, that support you're gonna need to be successful while in college is also included in those fees. And then we also mentioned earlier that we are a division one school and we compete in Ohio Valley Conference. So you can attend any of our sporting events for free with your student ID. So clearly our fees go a long ways for our students and really take advantage of those while you're here at Southeast. Right below there you see your textbook rental fee for the whole academic year is roughly around $363. The average we have for that is per class, not textbook. So even if a class does require you to rent out more than one textbook through our program here at Southeast, it's gonna be roughly around $36 per class, not textbook. So saves you a lot of money in the long run within that. Uh, right below there, you see our average room rate, of course, your dorm, so living on campus. You can see the average we have there is over $6,000 for your dorm fees on that. It does come with the laundry fees and utilities. So yes, you're gonna get your wireless Wi-Fi to stream on whichever platform, Netflix or Hulu. So that is included on there. And then the last fee you see listed here is of course your meal plan. We mentioned those earlier. This is based on the 15, meal per, 15 meals per week classic with $140 on flex. And for the whole year is set over $3,000. So when you add all those fees that I just broke down for you all, you can see that you're looking for the total cost of attendance here at Southeast under $18,000 for the whole academic year. So definitely uh, you can see where your money is gonna go within that. Uh, let us know what questions you have about that breakdown of costs. We're more happy to explain it to you. So keep shooting those questions out. But at this moment, I'd like to turn it over to Byron to let you know all about what steps to take as far as getting into Southeast. Thank you, Dulce. Thank you for that. So after hearing all about how amazing Southeast is, I'm sure you're wondering how to apply. So to apply for a CMO, you can find us on the comment app or you can just go to cmo.edu and apply there. Um, we're offering a free application fee, meaning we have, you can apply for free for all of our domestic students. As uh, Dose also mentioned earlier, we um, are doing test optional this year. We're introducing our test optional policy as well as self-reporting academic record, meaning you can just report, you can do a self-report on your academic record without needing your transcripts, sending your transcripts over before you graduate while you're applying and everything. And there's absolutely no essay required, so applying should be an easy step. So the next steps you're going to want to take after you apply for this wonderful university is you're gonna to wanna to schedule a campus visit to come see and experience how wonderful our campus really is, how beautiful it is, and to feel that great, resilient, great health spirit. To contact us, our, our main number is 573-651-2590, or you can uh, contact us by email at admissions, admissions at cmo.edu as well. We'll be more than happy to get back with you, answer any questions that you have and everything. And once again, this is the lovely admissions teams that we have here for you. Feel free to contact us, come down, meet your admission counselors. We're more than happy to talk to you about any questions you have, anything that comes to mind and yeah. At this moment, we just wanna thank you again for tuning in with us tonight. And if you have any uh, questions at all, now it's Feel free, don't hesitate at all, and we'll answer those questions for you. You know, Byron, I think I'm gonna take up uh, one of the questions live. Uh, someone had actually asked in the chat if there was time at the end, if uh, we could go into College of Education a little bit more, and uh, we got plenty of time, another 15 minutes, so I think I'll take like two minutes to highlight that, and if anybody else wants to grab something, if somebody else has a good question out there. Uh, so the College of Education, you know, we did talk about how they're recognized nationally, all that jazz. Uh, something else that does make them stand out, though, and something I really enjoy about it is how they handle field experience. Um, so a lot of schools are going to be different in how they handle what experience you get um, as far as going out into schools as a student. Some schools, it may be as simple as you're just doing student teaching, and that's it. You have one semester to try and figure everything out before you're thrown out in the fire to, to be a teacher, or some schools might do a year. 
Uh, we're very proud to say that we had two years of field experience. So you actually go through a block system at SEMO. Uh, essentially what you're doing is you come into SEMO, uh, you are uh, in that education prep program, taking your courses for the type of educator you're gonna be, maybe it's math, science, music. Uh, but then once you get to junior and senior year, you enter into the blocks, block one through four for education. Block one, you're going out as a class. The entire block one class goes out together to multiple different local schools in our communities to observe, take notes, come back to class, talk about it. Block two, you and a partner. Uh, you're gonna meet up at a designated school. You stay at all semester. So uh, they're gonna change the schools throughout each block. That way you get more experience, more well-rounded. You may teach three to four lessons uh, at block two. Uh, so you may get up there and co-teach with your uh, fellow college student, or you may uh, do a lesson by yourself through much coaching and help, of course. Uh, and then block three, now you're going into senior year. Block three, you're by yourself going out to a school. It's very exciting. You do a lot of co-teaching with the respective teacher at that uh, local community school, uh, but you teach about half the time. Uh, so it's really starting to get involved, really starting to learn how it works. And then you finally have student teaching, the, the ever anticipated last semester. That is when it is all you. Uh, that classroom is yours. Of course, that respective teacher in your new school is there to support you and help you, um, you know, coach you through it all. Uh, but that's definitely something uh, that is a huge, huge plus as far as the education program goes here. Uh, so I hope that hope that helps. Make, I'm going to make sure there wasn't anything that just popped up as far as education, and then I'll step back from the mic here. Uh, what do you think you have? Oh, well, I think I just answered that one. There was one on education compared to another education program. The more experience, more cost effective, the fact that it's uh, actually getting more hands-on for sure. Um, yeah, that answered that one too. Great. Well, I'm going to hop back and, and let somebody else uh, hop on a question. It looks like one of our other questions in the chat says, would you mind talking about jobs on campus, leadership roles like student ambassadors, and et cetera? So I will say um, at SEMO, we have a cool job portal called Red Hawk Jobs, and that's how you can find out um, how to apply to jobs on campus. And as a student, I had a lot of jobs on campus. I worked at the library and I worked in residence life. And I will say it's awesome when you work on campus because you don't have to ask off for breaks. Um, classes are automatically your first priority and they take that um, into consideration too when they make your schedule. They want you to be successful as a student. And we do have student ambassadors. So in our office of admissions, we hire student ambassadors who give tours every single semester. Yeah. Does someone else want to take the next question? Yeah, I'd be happy to hop on another one. Um, to even expand on what you're saying, it was crazy. I found out, uh, you know, when I first started being an admission counselor, we hire over a thousand student workers every year. Uh, so there's so many uh, great opportunities. Uh, you know, there's another good question that popped up. It says, as a sophomore in high school, is it a good idea to get in touch with the school you're looking at as to plan out your future? I think it's an amazing idea. Um, the reason being is that you can start to kind of get a 10,000 foot view of things. You're not stressed or pressured to really do anything as a sophomore. Um, you can just take it easy. You talk to them, uh, spitball some ideas back and forth. Um, you could even start planning out scholarships and sorting them out by the deadlines. That way, when you get to senior year, it's easy breezy. You're just going in, you already did all the legwork, and you just go in and apply you know, for some of those extra ones that may be uh, private scholarships or paper in you know, your local community. And, uh, so I think it's a great idea to look early. It never hurts. Yes, I'll take one of the other questions. I think someone asked about wildlife biology was mentioned and do you happen to have a vet program? So we do have an animal science program here at Southeast that you can get your bachelor's in. We actually have our, a greenhouse farm available as a facility for you to get kind of your hands-on experience. We do have live cattle, so definitely kind of get the hands-on experience that we talked about. And then a follow-up to that question where what kind of band opportunities are offered for non-music majors? 
We do have two types of band here at Southeast. We have what you're probably familiar right now in high school is your marching band that go on the parades, homecoming, uh, they go at their football games. Uh, we have auditions for those for that band on the springtime. So definitely reach out to the music department, the whole auditions for that. And there are some amazing scholarship opportunities for involvement with the marching band. So definitely reach out to them so they can get you going for that. And then the other type of band that we have is more of the orchestra show band, so to speak, that they go uh, more of the pep rally in the basketball games, but they also perform on stage, like in a theater setting, uh, the band that kind of play, uh, plays for the plays that we have here at Southeast. So they also have their own auditions for that. And they do have those scholarship involvement pieces too. So definitely a lot of options. Again, you don't have to be a music major. You just have to contact the music department and they'll get you going for that audition in the springtime. There's a lot of great questions coming in. I want to hop on another one too. So in addition to working with East Central Missouri students, uh, I'm actually the River Campus liaison too. Um, so I get to specialize with all these fine art students. Uh, it looks like we got a couple of them in the chat. So I love it. Keep all these questions coming. Um, you know, in addition to what Dulce was saying, uh, if you, you can see my info in the top left corner of the screen there, text me, uh, give me a call. I can actually give you the links to get you connected with uh, Dr. Kenny for uh, marching band, show band. Those are $725 scholarships for marching band, $400 for show band, and 60% of our marching band are non-music majors. So you are more than welcome to come and participate. Uh, and there are so many other opportunities too, whether it be jazz band, wind symphony, all those great things. Uh, another good question though with the fine arts is, would you mind talking about your theater majors and minors? Uh, yes, please. So there are a lot of good differences to kind of point out if I had to select a few quick things to highlight. When you're looking at theater majors and minors, it's really important to know what the difference between a BA and a BFA is. Uh, so what that means is you have a Bachelor's of Arts and a Bachelor of Fine Arts. So a Bachelor of Arts is going to be more generalized information. It's a major that is nicely paired with another major. So this is something for people that maybe they want to double major, they want to study two different things. Uh, whereas a BFA, a Bachelor of Fine Arts, it's getting really into the specifics and the details and nitty gritty of it. So a BFA is going to go much deeper into that content than a BA would. Uh, so maybe you want to do a BA in theater, but you also want to major in business. You want to major in entrepreneurship because you want to be able to run your own studio. Or same would go for dance. A BA would be good there. But a BFA would be great if it was someone that wants to be a professional performer uh, and they are very uh, outgoing and very dedicated into that field. So hope that gave you a little bit of info on the majors. The minors are going to be about 18 credits, so it shows you have an emphasis in something. That's great if you have just an interest. You just want to show that you have that interest and it's a strong one, but you don't want to major in it. So that could be a good option and count towards uh, your major. It could knock out a couple of genets for you. All right. Well, I guess I'll hop on this uh, next question here too. I saw one that just came up saying, uh, do you have a, a finance degree? And yes, we do. And that's also part of the, the international uh, accreditation. So another great opportunity if you are looking to major there and that falls under that Harrison College of Business and Computing. Does anybody else want to take uh, another one of the, the questions just to maybe reiterate it to the group and might be something somebody else was thinking of too. All right. Looks like I get the limelight then. <laughs> uh, so if you, if you do have any more questions, please throw them in there. I'm happy to keep answering them live. Uh, you know, one that I always had, uh, I didn't know if, any, if everybody had saw this question too, is can freshmen have cars on campus? Yes, you can. Uh, you're more than welcome to bring it. I loved having it for, you know, a weekend or anything like that to be able to, uh, to go out as well, uh, go enjoy the town. There's so many amazing opportunities in Cape with a population of about 40,000 people. Definitely factors into that best of both worlds, being able to go out and get involved. All right, I see another question in the chat about double majoring. That is an option at SEMO. Usually we just encourage students to meet with their advisors um, as soon as they know that they want to double major. 
so they can take the right amount of classes each semester to still graduate within four years. So that's one of our other questions. Oh, I see another one that says, what is your forensic program like? So we have a couple different forensic programs. We have one in chemistry and then we have another one in forensic science. So those are both within our College of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And I know we're running out of time, so I would just encourage you to um, talk to one of us and we can get you more information about the forensic science program too. And we are offering one-on-one -on -one virtual faculty appointments, so you even have the opportunity to learn from faculty too. All right. Does someone else want to get the next question about clubs? Well, you know, I'm always happy to hop in the limelight. I'll get another question. Uh, let's see. Yeah, what are the most uh, involved clubs? Well, I'll, I'll start saying esports. That was one of the fastest growing ones last year, you know, over 300 members. Um, I would say the other most involved opportunities are going to be our intramural sports and club sports. Uh, you know, there's everything out there for you. Uh, you know, as, as Emily was saying, even like Harry Potter fan club, the rugby club. Intramural sports, though, is like friendly competition within the sport. It's SEMO students versus SEMO students. So anything from flag football to softball to uh, baseball, basketball, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities there. I would say that's probably one of the most involved opportunities as well. Uh, let's see. You talk about A plus, things like being accepted. Yeah, um, the Residence Life Leadership Scholarship, that thousand dollars towards housing, that is a great A plus recognition scholarship. Uh, and then also that Will to Do Award, SEMO, uh, that has the offer. It's kind of like A plus, but even better across four years, free tuition and fees. Uh, so another great program there too. All right, hop off and let somebody else grab one. Alrighty. It looks like we have time for maybe one more question, um, maybe a couple more, but this question says, what is your advice on picking a dorm room? Um, so as a student here, I lived in a lot of different dorms. I lived in community style dorms and suite style dorms. And I always say um, they're both good for different reasons. With community style, you're not responsible for buying toilet paper, paper towels, and cleaning is automatically done for you. With suite style, you are responsible for those um, responsibilities, but sometimes they're a little, the dorms are quieter in suite, so it just kind of depends on what you're interested in. And, um, you know, some dorms even have dining within them, so each dorm is a little different. So I always say there's not one dorm that's better than others. All right. It's all you, Byron. All right, everyone. We just want to thank you again for tuning in tonight. Thank you for all the wholesome questions. And thank you again for just taking that time out of your day to come listen to us and learn all about Southeast Missouri State University. I hope you all enjoy what we had to say and hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. And I have a couple of, uh, a couple of last minute housekeeping items. Um, so let me see if I can get to that slide and we'll do that. First off, um, thank you all for showing up. Thank you presenters. Um, I went to CAPE, so it was exciting to, or I'm sorry, I went to CMO, so it was exciting to uh, hear all about what's going on there. Um, when you close this window, um, there's going to be a link to a real quick four question survey. So we'd really appreciate any feedback you might have for the future. And this is just one of, I don't know, I want to say 132. There's a lot of sessions out there. So feel free to go back to moacac.org, like I said at the beginning, and um, pick up another one if you'd like. About a week from now, um, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other recordings. So if there's something you see on that list that, that you're like, oh, I missed it. No, you didn't, but wait a week. So thank you everybody for being here. Um, it was great working with you and hanging with you for the evening. Bye. <laughs>